Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today we're going to be taking a look at a project that's currently on Kickstarter called Little Dungeon by Ed DeCost. Now Little Dungeon is a family-friendly dungeon crawl card game for two to five players. Now in this game, each player is a part of a party that is wandering through a dungeon, gathering up various treasures and weapons in an attempt to fight off monsters. Now eventually you're going to have to fight a boss monster at the end. Once he's defeated, whoever has the most treasure in their backpack leaving the dungeon is the winner of the game. Now let's take a look at this game, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a look at the cards that come in a little dungeon, and first thing that uh, you're going to need when you're going on a dungeon crawl is you're going to need some equipment. So you're going to have some cards here with some of your weapons. you got an axe or a shield or a sword or maybe even a key. You're going to need the key because when you find treasure, you may uncover a locked treasure chest. You're going to need a key to open it up. There's a bunch of different treasures that you can find along the way. We've got some fullerene and some emeralds and coins and diamonds and rubies and sapphires. And no dungeon crawl is complete without some monsters. So we've got some slimes and we've got snarls and we've got ogres. And we have the boss monster here who's the shadow mage. And one other thing that's creeping around in the dungeon is the thief who can come along and steal stuff from some of the other players. So these are the types of the cards that come in the deck. Let me get this shuffled up and I will show you how to play. Okay, so I have little dungeons set up for three players, and the first thing that you do is you take the Shadow Mage card and you remove it from the deck. You shuffle up the rest of the deck and deal each player seven cards, which I have done right here. The rest of the cards are placed in the center, and the playing area surrounded here now will become the dungeon. Next, each player is going to look at their hand, and any treasure cards that they have will go into their backpack, which will be placed right in front of them which we look here, we have one, and any treasure chests go into the dungeon. So we've done that for player one. Player two here, we have uh, three different treasures that will go into their backpack in front of them here, so those will go here. And finally the fourth player here, we look through their hand, and we have one here. Now, let me quickly show you what you can do with the different cards that are in your hand. When you're dealt a monster card and you have it in your hand, you can use this to scare away a lesser monster. So we have a couple different things that are in here that we can use um, to kind of fight off some of the other monsters that we may encounter, but now we put a bigger one in there and it's going to have to be dealt with eventually. You also have weapons that you can use to discard to fight against some of the monsters. Now if you look at this ogre right here, if you notice he has a number 2 here and 2 hearts. He is going to require a total damage of 2 in order to kill him. Now we have weapons here that will have little swords on them, little, um, and so this axe here will deliver 2. So it's enough to kill this ogre, but it's not enough to kill this snarl. So um, eventually somebody else in the party is going to have to deal with this monster and hit him three times before he can die. Now, we have this thief card here which we can discard and we can take a treasure from any other player that's on the board or we can steal it from any loot that may be under a monster in the dungeon, which I'll get to during the gameplay. And finally, you have a key here that we can use to open up any treasure chests that are in the dungeon. Now we can open them up as long as there is not a monster in the dungeon in play. Now the Shadow Mage here, he's off to the side, so technically at this point he is not in play. So, on a player's turn, what they will do is they will draw a card and they will place it into their hand. If it happens to be a monster, it is going to be played immediately. If it is a treasure chest, it will be placed on the board immediately. If it is a treasure, it will be placed into their backpack. So this happens to be a weapon which I will hold on to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play this key right here to open up this treasure chest because right now there's no monsters here and I'm going to want to get that treasure right, right away. So I'm going to use my key and I'm going to open it. Now, another player will take the top three cards of the deck here and the player who opened up the treasure chest will choose one and see what happens. 
we have a shield here, and so that will go into their hand. The other two cards just go right on top of the deck. These go into the discard pile, and that is their turn. Next player will in turn draw a card, and it happens to be a treasure, and it will go right into their backpack. Next, one will draw a card, happens to be a treasure. So right now we are kind of finding lots of really cool things, but that may change. Back to the player number one, they're going to find another weapon. It goes right into their hand. So we're sitting really, really good right now with uh, a bunch of weapons. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this thief works. I'm going to play this thief right here, and I'm going to drop it on the player next to me. And I'm going to steal this fullerene because this happens to be a very, very valuable gem worth three. So I'm going to place that in my backpack, and the thief then is discarded. Next player here draws a card. It's a shield. Next player here draws a card. They have a sword. So we're kind of gearing up with some weapons here. Let's see what happens now. Another shield. And these cards are going to keep continuing to add to their hand. Ah, we have a slime, so we have a monster. So now we're going to have to address this monster, and there's three things that we can do in order to get rid of this monster. Number one, we can fight it with a weapon to kill it or damage it. We can use a shield to repel it for this particular turn, or we can essentially bribe it to go away by giving it one of the gems from our backpack. Now, let me just show you how a couple of these different actions work. I'm going to kill this particular one here, so I will discard my sword, which happens to have one dagger, and the slime has one heart, so it's enough to kill it. So I'll play that on him. He is destroyed, goes into the discard pile, and that's their turn. Next player here draws another weapon. Back to player number one. We draw a gold coin, goes right into the backpack. We go back to this player right here, we draw another treasure. Go back to the player number three, we have a key, which we're going to hold on to in case we come across any locked chests. Back to player number one. They get a coin. Player number two gets a shield back in their hand. Player number three, we have a snarl that's going to pop up. Now, we've got a few different options that we can do here. Um, we will go ahead and I do I have I have a shield that I can use to repel him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard the shield and let the next player have to deal with him. Now what I can do here is I can attempt to hit him with this axe. I'm going to place this axe on him. It's going to put two damage on him. Now he's still alive and I have addressed him. This player over here, we have a bunch of shields here and we have a weapon. And he's mostly dead. I don't really want to waste a shield. So what I may do is I may just pay him off. And I'm going to give him one of my treasures in my chest. So I will place this under him. Now, the next player here will, since we have a lot of weapons, will deliver the final blow and they will play a sword on this snarl. That's three damage, killing the snarl. And what's going to happen now is this loot will go to this player and go into his backpack. This play is going to continue until eventually we are going to play all of the cards in our hand. What will happen then is going to signal the final battle, and any monsters that will be left in the dungeon will have to be dealt with along with the Shadow Mage. So when the Shadow Mage comes out, you're going to have to play a card going to deal with all of the monsters. If we defeat the Shadow Mage first, all the other monsters run away, whoever kills the boss monster will be able to take all of the loot. And... At the end of the game, whoever has the most loot in their backpack wins the game. This is a very light, family-friendly dungeon crawl game. As you saw, there's lots of treasures and lots of weapons, so there's lots of opportunity to fight these monsters. And so this is how you play Little Dungeon. Okay, let me talk about Little Dungeon. And the first thing that I want to say is this game has been developed and balanced nicely for a family, especially with young ones with younger children, like ages 6 and up. So if you're looking for something that's going to be a really deep, heavy strategy game, this is not going to be your type of game. If you're looking for something that can be played with little kids 
and have a nice little romp through dungeon, then this is going to be something that you'd be interested in. First of all, let me talk about the artwork of the game, and the artwork is very cutesy and uh, kid-friendly, and you really only have a few different things to uh, deal with in terms of the monsters, so it's not there's not a lot of cards to have to grasp the concept of what's going on. You have three types of monsters. You have a slime, an ogre, and a snarl. Strengths 1, 2, and 3, and then of course you have the shadow mage, which is the mo boss monster with a strength of 4. Now, on the cards, numerically there is a number in one corner, and on the other side there are symbols with the number of hearts that they have, which is their strength. Now, likewise, uh, with the weapons, you have two weapons. Essentially, you have a sword and you have an axe, strength one and two, and they, again, are numerical and symbols with the uh, daggers on the one side. And so you can match up the uh, symbols if you're not really good at recognizing your numbers yet for younger players. So it's very nice. You can just do a comparison to quickly... Uh, realize what is left to do with uh, killing off a monster in the dungeon. So you have those aspects there. You have uh, nice brightly colored uh, treasure gems that are in the deck that look really, really good. And you have a nice spiky looking treasure chest and a cool looking key. So that's pretty much the artwork that makes up the game. And it looks really, really good and gives you a nice sense of having a romp through the dungeon. Now, gameplay mechanics... There's a couple of cool things that I like about this game. For example, dealing with the monsters when you draw them. You have three options in terms of dealing with them. You can fight them, you can use a shield to defend them, or you can essentially give them money, bribe them to go away. Now, with those different uh, options, it's going to come into how you're going to manage your resources. Okay, you may want to hold on to a stronger weapon like an axe and not waste it on a, uh, on a slime who's only a strength one. And so you may want to give away uh, one of your treasures in your backpack to pay them off or use a shield. So it's going, there is going to be the strategy of how you're going to manage the resources that, you're ha that you um, have in your hand and also in your backpack. So the other thing too is... Um, that you're going to want to make sure that you have a variety of things to do because as soon as you cannot either fight a monster, repel him, or pay him off, uh, if you encounter one, then you're going to be scared out of the dungeon and you're going to be out of the game and you will not be able to continue. Now, on the other hand, um, if you quickly are playing all of your cards in your hand and you're not getting rid of anything in your backpack, you can accelerate the gameplay and bring about the boss monster coming into play first. So you can essentially have some control over how fast the game is going to be played. So if you're quickly getting cards out of your hand and then you have an empty hand, the boss monster comes out, but you are also going to be at a disadvantage because you are going to essentially be drawing the top card of the draw deck and you only have one card to deal with. So you may uh, or may not be successful at continuing on at the end of the game. So you have some good element of resource management in this game. So you uh, definitely have to pay attention to how you're dealing with things. Now, from a family perspective, this game is just good family fun, something that you can use to have time together to play a nice light fantasy themed uh, dungeon type game where you're going through trying to uh, gather up treasure and fight some monsters and try to win the game. There's nothing scary in here for younger players. Uh, again, the artwork is very kid-friendly, so this is just a nice game to um, bring the family unit together and spend some time um, just having some fun. Now, there, the skill that this game would really develop for younger players is how you're going to make some decisions and how you're going to manage your resources. So parents, if you're playing this game with your kids, a little bit of coaching uh, the first couple of games and they're going to start to realize what they're going to have to do when they play this game and so they're going to learn how to manage their resources. So that is a very, very nice aspect and mechanic that is built into this game. So if you are interested in uh, spending some time as a family delving into the dungeon and fighting off 
uh, monsters and gathering up treasures, then take the time to support the Little Dungeon Project from Ed DeCost. I will have the link to the project in the video description below, so you can click on that and uh, pledge this project and make it become a reality. Okay, that's it for now, and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table.